At Washington's Armed Forces Retirement Home, the annual Christmas dance is a time to reminisce and reflect. We would like to do an old traditional tune right now made famous many years ago by Bing Crosby. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. When White Christmas appeared in the 1942 movie Holiday Inn, um, not many people paid it much notice. All right, roll. Music. All right, action. But something funny happened. This was the first holiday that American troops were overseas uh, fighting World War II. And White Christmas's sentimental vision of a wintry Christmas on the home front really spoke to American soldiers who uh, were looking forward to their first Christmas away from home, many of them in tropical places, or places where they were not about to experience a white Christmas. 7,000 miles away from home. And it, it got to you. Well, I heard someone singing it in the Philippines, first Christmas we had in the jungles. I know a whole bunch of us Americans were singing it. But 12 of us in the same camp together. Well, it was very, very sad and made you tears come to your eyes. I think White Christmas gave the soldiers a sense of what they were fighting for. Uh, either it was Betty Grable's legs or it was the sound of Bing Crosby's voice. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I think White Christmas definitely made them feel we belong to something that we're defending and we want to go home as fast as we can, so let's, let's get this over with. I play piano myself and I play that song and there's only one person that could sing it for me and that's Bing Crosby. Home, parents, <laughs> friend. It means so much. A radio service for American fighting men. The soldiers uh, heard Bing Crosby's record on the jukebox at the PX and in USO halls and over the airwaves of Armed Forces Radio. And uh, they really embraced the song as their kind of uh, wartime anthem. He really makes you hear the words and he makes you hear his own longing uh, for something that, for, for the world, uh, the better world, whatever that is. It, it's illusory, it doesn't really exist, it never did. Except we always think that there was something before that was better than the way it is now. And of course that's a very easy uh, illusion to encourage during wartime, especially if you're in the swamp somewhere in Europe or, or um, Asia. And so to hear Crosby singing about returning to the past, to returning home, to the white Christmases we remember, of children listening for the sleigh bells and the treetops glistening, and uh, this, of course, had a tremendous uh, impact. And children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. Whenever he sang White Christmas and, and other songs of that period, uh, there were just mobs every place he went, and there were tears. The song that is most asked for from me over there was White Christmas. Really got so that I hesitated about doing it because invariably it caused such a nostalgic yearning among the men that it made them sad. And heaven knows I didn't come that far to make them sad. And for this reason, several times I tried to cut it out of the show. But these guys just hollered for it. In 1954, when he made the movie White Christmas, which is really uh, about the Korean War, but the, the opening scene, instead of the, the movie climaxing with White Christmas as Holiday Inn did, did uh, this movie begins with uh, Crosby on a stage singing to servicemen while in front of a Courier and Ives print. Uh, how, how American is that and how much of a celebration of the past is that while bombing is going on in the far distance and Binging singing White Christmas and everybody is trying to keep from tearing up uh, all the soldiers uh, in the audience. To hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of 
of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. The song still has the same mysterious and magical effect decades later. Wonderful. There's nothing like it, absolutely. Most wonderful song I've ever written. And it's so meaningful to everybody, I think. Christmas has been